The Battle of Julu was fought in Julu in 207 BC primarily between forces of the Qin dynasty and the insurgent state of Chu. The Qin commander was Jiang Han, while the Chu leader was Xiang Yu. The battle concluded with a decisive victory for the rebels over the larger Qin army. The battle marked the decline of Qin military power as the bulk of Qin's armies were destroyed in this battle. Chapter 1 Background In the ninth lunar month of 208 BC, at the Battle of Dingtao, the Qin general Zhang Han defeated a force from the insurgent Chu state led by Xiang Liang. Zhang Han then led the Qin army north across the Yellow River to attack another rebel state, Zhao, and defeated the Zhao army. He then ordered his deputies Wang Li and Xi Jian to besiege Handan while he garrisoned his army at the south to maintain a route for supplying the troops attacking Handan. Zhao's ruler Zhao Xi sent a messenger to request aid from King Wei II of Chu. King Wei II dispatched two armies, the first, commanded by Song Yi, with Xiang Yu as his deputy, was to relieve the siege on Handan, the second, led by Lu Bang, would proceed to attack the Qin heartland of Guangzhou. The king promised, that he would grant whoever conquered Guangzhou first the title of King of Guangzhou. Song Yi's army reached Anyang, some distance away from Julu, where Zhao Xi's forces had retreated to. Song Yi ordered his troops to lay camp there for 46 days. Xiang Yu was eager to engage Jiang Han and avenge his uncle Xiang Liang, so he urged Song Yi to issue an attack order. Song Yi declined Xiang Yu's suggestion and remarked that Xiang was a foolhardy man, and gave instructions that anyone with barbaric, defiant, fame seeking behavior that leads to a violation of orders will be executed. Song Yi later sent his son Song Xiang to the Qi state, and threw a lavish banquet at Wu Jian to see his son off. At the time, there were heavy rains and Song Yi's soldiers suffered from cold and hunger. Xiang Yu made use of the situation to incite the men's anger towards Song Yi. On the morning of the 47th day, Xiang Yu burst into Song Yi's tent, took the latter by surprise and killed him. Xiang Yu then announced to the army that Song Yi was plotting with the Qi state against Chu, and that he had received a secret order from King Wei II to execute the traitor Song Yi. The other subordinate generals feared Xiang Yu and allowed him to be the acting commander. Xiang Yu sent a messenger to inform King Wei II and the king was forced to retroactively approve his command. Chapter 2 The Battle Xiang Yu sent Ying Bu and Zhongli Mo to lead 20,000 men to cross the Yellow River and reinforce Julu, and they won a few skirmishes. In the twelfth month of 208 BC, Xiang Yu personally led an army across the river to meet up with Ying Bu and Zhongli Mo. By the time he arrived on the battlefield, Zhao forces in Julu had been nearly starved under a prolonged siege by Jiang Han's deputy Wang Li. Xiang Yu ordered his men to carry only three days' worth of supplies and destroy the rest, along with their cauldrons and cooking utensils, and sink the boats they used to cross the river. In doing so, Xiang Yu was sending a clear signal to his troops that they had no chance of survival unless they defeated the enemy, and seized their supplies. Xiang Yu's troops fought very fiercely, to the extent of every Chu soldier taking on ten foes, and eventually defeated Qin forces in nine consecutive engagements. Wang Li's supply lines were disrupted and the Qin army suffered a crushing defeat. With casualties mounting to over 100,000, Jiang Han was forced to retreat from Julu to Jiuan, and he planned to defend Jiuan until reinforcements arrived from Xinyang. The Qin general Su Zhao was killed in action while Wang Li was captured. Xi Jian refused to surrender and committed suicide by throwing himself into a fire. Before Xiang Yu launched the assault, forces from other insurgent principalities had arrived at Julu to reinforce the Zhao state, but they did not dare to advance for fear of the large Qin army and only garrisoned outside of the battle area. When Xiang Yu attacked the Qin forces, the other rebel armies did not participate in the fighting, and they watched the battle from their camps. After seeing Xiang Yu defeat the 400,000 strong Qin army, the other insurgent forces came to join him out of admiration for his martial valor, 
thus increasing the size of his army to 400,000. When Siang Yu received them at the gate of his camp, the rebel commanders were so afraid of him that they sank to their knees and did not dare to look up at him. Chapter 3, Qin Surrender After his defeat, Zhang Hen sent his deputy Sima Xin to Xinyang to ask for reinforcements and supplies. The eunuch Zhao Gao deceived the Qin Emperor Qin Erxi and falsely accused Zhang Han of military failure and conspiring with the rebels. The emperor dismissed Zhang's request. Zhao Gao even sent assassins to kill Sima Xin on his return journey, but Sima survived and escaped back to report to Zhang Han. Just as Zhang Han was in a dilemma whether to retreat or surrender, Siang Yu's forces completely surrounded Zhang Han and prevented the Qin army from withdrawing. In dire straits, Zhang Han, along with his deputies Sima Xin and Dong Yi and his 200,000 men, eventually surrendered to Siang Yu in the summer of 207 BC. Chapter 4, Live Burial of Qin Soldiers In the eleventh month of 207 BC, Siang Yu led his army to the city of Xinon and made camp. He perceived the 200,000 surrendered Qin soldiers as disloyal and suspected that they might start a mutiny, so he had them all buried alive at the south of outside Xinon. Another reason for the massacre was that Siang Yu saw the Qin soldiers as a liability because they would put a strain on his army's food supplies. Chapter 5, Aftermath Although Siang Yu had the 200,000 surrendered Qin soldiers buried alive, he spared the three generals Zhang Han, Sima Xin, and Dong Yi. The three were later respectively appointed as King of Yong, King of Sai and King of Dai when Siang Yu divided the fallen Qin Empire into the Eighteen Kingdoms. The three were collectively known as the Three Kins and their domains were located in the former Qin heartland of Guangzhou. After his victory at Julu, Siang Yu led his forces towards Guangzhou and prepared for an invasion of the Qin heartland. In the winter of 207 BC, the last Qin Emperor Ziying surrendered to Lu Bang in Xinyang, bringing an end to the Qin dynasty. When Siang Yu reached Honggu Pass, the eastern gateway to Guangzhou, he saw that Lu Bang had already occupied Guangzhou. Siang Yu was displeased as he heard that Lu Bang would become king of Guangzhou in accordance with King Wai II's earlier promise. After the feast at Hong Gate, Siang Yu occupied Xinyang in early 206 BC after Lu Bang evacuated his forces from the city. Siang Yu ordered the execution of Zi Ying and his family, as well as the destruction of the Apang Palace by fire. Chapter 6 Legacy some Cheng Yu and proverbs originated from the events in the Battle of Julu, including Breaking cauldrons and sinking boats, in modern usage, used similarly to the English to cross the Rubicon or to reach the point of no return. Pitting the strength of one against ten. Sitting on the wall and watching the Ming Dynasty politician and scholar Mao Kun described the Battle of Julu as Cheng Yu's proudest moment in battle, and Taishigong's most gratifying document. The Qing dynasty artist Zheng Bonxiao wrote a poem titled Battle of Julu. Cruelty and barbarism masked by deception and cunning, Cao Cao and Zhu Wen both claimed the throne. This is nothing like a hero riding on a fine horse with a beautiful maiden, people who cross the Wu River shed tears. In 1912, Workers constructing the Longhai Railway unearthed large amounts of human remains at Yima, Henan, the site where Siang Yu had the 200,000 surrendered Qin soldiers buried alive. The place has since been referred to as the Chu Pits. <laughs>